onto one sheet of paper. That's how small I used to pencil my pages. These are pencil pages, about the size, a little bit bigger than a baseball card. Um, and um, I don't do that now, because it would just make me go nuts. I, I can't. <laughs> but I did this because I had, um, I had a bad habit. You guys, how many of you like to draw? And how many of you like to draw lots of details in your drawings? I do, I do that too. So I knew that about myself. So I said, I'm not gonna give myself any space to do that. <laughs> and so eventually, I was able to train myself out of it. And now I can draw really big and not worry about the details. Those bad habits go away over time. So I've trained myself out of the bad habits. So my desk generally looks kind of like this. Um, I have like a pair of scissors. I actually cut and paste a lot, uh, or cut and scotch tape panels. I'll like move things around. It looks like, um, um, like I'm putting together a collage or something half the time. When I write the scenes, I actually write, uh, I, have, I have two things that I do. I write the dialogue, and I, um, I, I also do the panel layouts and things like that. Um, oh, there's another thing, design. So character design, set design, concept design. Um, but what I often do for dialogue is I just write the dialogue bubbles without saying who's saying what, and if I, if I can't tell who's saying what just by reading it, then something's wrong. So this is actually a really good test. If I'm reading this and I can't tell who's saying something, that means I'm saying that, not the character. So if you're a writer, this is a tip. Try this exercise, and if you can, like, you can, you listen to somebody talk and you know that that's that person, then you're probably on the right track. And, and trust me, most of the writing that I do just sounds like me trying to work out the story. <laughs> and that's what you don't get to see. You, you don't see that. My editor does, so they know I'm very human. <laughs> and that I make a ton of mistakes. In fact, when I do each of the books, I give myself enough time to draw the book close to 10 times because about eight to 10, I, I need about eight to 10 chances to do this because I know that if I give myself eight to 10 chances, that gives, you know, all I have to do is net, you know, 10 to 20% um, success. Uh, that, so basically, I used to play big, I like baseball. <laughs> Uh, and so that, that means that all I have to do is like bat 100 and 200. That's the expectation that I get. If I'm doing great and batting 300, like Hall of Fame style batting, that means then 70% um, then of everything I'm gonna do is gonna get thrown away at Hall of Fame level work. That's how I feel. So this is what some of the concept art looks like. Uh, some pages. Um, there's a font that's based on my handwriting. I plug that in, do a lot of rewriting there. I do detailed line work over the blue line printout. So I do two blue line sets, and then I do um, a final with a graphite pencil over the blue. And scan that back into the computer and then get rid of all the blue and it looks like this. So from that to that, and then we color it in Photoshop. Add the mood, lighting, and things like that. So the painting in Amulet is a little bit different than most painting you've probably seen because a lot of it is light-based painting. Um, I, I was a cinematographer, director. I worked in film. I actually, you know, I actually used to code in in a 3D program called Maya. I used to do mail scripting and things like that to like make lights do certain things and shaders and surfaces and things like look cool. Um, so I actually apply a lot of that knowledge to this. So even if I'm in a totally different workspace and I was working in 3D, it, that all comes back into play here. Like I used to work with architects, so um, I actually learned a lot about graphic design there. So a lot of my panel work layout uh, is based on things like a lot of architects used to tell me, um, where I'm, I basically try to make sure that none of these lines ever line up with any of these lines so that I'm not sending you to the wrong place, you know, things like that. So you can, you can learn all sorts of stuff. The more varied your experience is, the better. So for those that are writers, like that's, my, that's my, my biggest tip to you, is just go try and experience different things so that you can learn about them and then bring them into something. And, and, and then it'll feel fresh and it'll feel really different. And people, maybe it'll be something that just ch changes the game <laughs> completely. And, uh, um, and that's what I'm always looking to do. I actually don't read a lot of comics, not because I don't like it, but it's just that's where I work. I work in comics, so I'm often reading just nonfiction. I'm watching sports. I'm doing all sorts of other types of research, bringing it into comics. 
I'll read comics every now and then. If I see somebody who does, does something fantastic that I can't figure out, I, I think it's the greatest feeling in the world. I love it. It's awesome. Okay. All right, so again, I, I wanted to be a rag designer as a kid, so I, I saw the, the opportunity to make that happen in the comics, so Amulet should feel like a ride. Does it feel like a ride, you guys? Kind of like a roller coaster? Yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> so the first one was like like one roller coaster. It felt like one really good roller coaster. And Amulet 2, I wanted to build out the world a little bit, so I wanted it to feel more like a theme park. So when you read this one, it should feel a little bit more like like, if the first one was Matterhorn, then it should now feel like Fantasyland, you know? <laughs> I wanted to expand it. And each of the books, I, I feel like that's what we're working on, is trying to expand what we're doing. The, the books actually don't get any longer. That's one thing that I'm really trying to, to, to do, and I don't want to make a book that's just way too long. I don't want to waste your time. Um, but I feel like if I can get better, then I can make the book still feel bigger with fewer pages. Think back on like all these old Jack Kirby comics, like from the 50s and 60s, just felt way bigger than a lot of the comics that I. No, I mean, no knock on comics now, <laughs> but like a lot of the Golden Age comics did feel bigger, and that's what you're seeing in the movies these days. Is a representation of the old comics that just felt massive, and they were like 20-page comics that just felt so big. And I've been trying to find ways to make that happen in Amulet. So, lots of. Uh, yeah, just a lot of the graphic design, um, theme park interest, architecture, all that stuff that kind of goes into this. So that's what's really cool about comics is that it, is that you could do so many different things. I like I like doing different things, and I like wearing many hats. One thing that I get to do on Amulet is I get to to explore all sorts of different types of disciplines when I'm making it. Most of my, my time goes into research for writing. Right, and so here's the drawing I did when um, I was about eight or nine years old. My, my mom sent me a, a, a photo and she said, look at this awesome drawing you did. I love it. You know, and I was like, wow, that, that's not bad. <laughs> Usually my, <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed by my eight or nine year old you know, self drawing. So as a Mother's Day gift, what I decided to do is I decided to paint it um, the way I paint it now is partly for myself too, to see like, you know, where am I at now? You know, I know this probably took me all day, so let me see what I can do in like in an hour. And so I just put this together in an hour and I made this nice print, sent it to my mom, and she uh, um, she framed it. Uh, she framed it, and it's well, I framed it, sent it to her, and uh, it's on her wall now. Um, but what's what's good about seeing something like this if you're someone who is eight or nine years old? If you draw like anywhere close to this, then, and I, I hadn't even focused on drawing. Like my life is, I've been doing all sorts of stuff. I, I had to like go through a, like this weird path to get back into comics. If I was focused on comics, I would have been able to draw like this a long time ago. Um, but yeah, if you just stick with it, at eight or nine, it looks like this. When you're about 35, 36, I'm 39 right now. Um, but about th about 36 years old, this is what it'll look like, um, the work that you do. And you'll do this in less than an hour, whereas like that probably took a few hours. So that's your scale. You know, If you can see ahead, you'll get there. <laughs> but you got to stick with it. Um, a lot of people just react to the first time they draw. And they draw poorly, of course. You're going to be bad at it <laughs> if you haven't drawn before. It just doesn't, it just doesn't appear out of nowhere. Um, but but it's, it's the kids and the adults who just keep going back at something, over time, there's an improvement, and they, they, there's like a breakthrough, and then they build on that, and just keep building like a ladder. And over time, you know, you'll, you'll have that confidence to, uh, to do all sorts of stuff. And if you're gonna do graphic novels, you should probably start with all that stuff right now, because you're gonna have to know a lot of different things to do it, okay? All right, so here, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and paint, and then I think, uh, Faith, you wanna join?